Hi guys, welcome to today's Friday's Drink Chat. Um, I'm Nikki, I'm the coordinator for Hospitality Table Cornwall and I'm here with Ellie Owen today for our first episode, if you will, of our Friday's Drinks Chat. So today is going to be all about champagne, um, perfect for a Friday and this <laughs> chat is basically going to be to show you some of the courses that we can develop with Ellie make sure you guys are interested and if you are you can go over to the link in our bio and join the waiting list where you'll when you'll get a priority for some of our champagne courses let's start off with this insane location we're at the old garage on the Roseland <laughs> you've also got another location starting up soon haven't you yeah so we got the um Yes, yeah, so we're over at Nansledden, just outside nice. of Newquay. So yeah, really, really exciting about that. Cool. As and well. This is a new venture for you. Yeah, so new venture for me. You're the wine director for here. Yeah. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. So when did you start here and what are you going to be doing? So really like recent actually, but um, I've helped Lucy before with, um, with with kind of the initial kind of ideas about mm -hmm. how um, how the old garage would kind of be. Um, and this is, yeah, so it feels a bit like coming home really. It's yeah. really exciting and yeah, it's, so yeah. Before you started here, what was your, we'll do a whistle stop tour okay. of your career. Okay, because yeah. you've done a lot. Um, <laughs> and Ellie has also helped us from the very start with the project. We've received her support with the True Food Festival where she did wine pairings. I started at, uh, well, I've been in hospitality forever, so since I was, yeah, like 13 and then done lots of different things and other things outside of this. But actually, uh, I started my wine career really probably when I lived in France, mm. worked at 15 Cornwall where I did the WSET, and then uh, worked there for about 10 years. Okay. Um, and then moved to Paul Ainsworth where I was there for 18 months, and now here. Brilliant. So what are your plans when you set up your Nan Sledden shop? Is it going to be the same as this? Yeah. Are you also going to be the wine director for there as well? Yeah, so basically, our, it'd be like wine, yeah, so basically, uh, well, together with Lucy, we could be in charge of the wines and trading and stuff like that. Here is our flagship store. The stores are essentially going to be both the same. And actually, as we grow and stuff, all of our stores are going to feel the same kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. So really kind of mellow. Um, everyone is trained in WSET. So as nice. soon as you come in, you're going to be greeted with people that really kind of have got um, like a great foundation of wine knowledge mm -hmm. um, but also you're going to have loads of classics the wines that you know if you've got a favorite you know if you like your seven on Bronx for example yeah. you can come in and you can find those if you uh, want something a little bit different then you can come in and you come and find those as well nice. so it's like you can be as safe or as adventurous as you want but basically yeah. the wines here are just going to accommodate for everybody nice I mean I know we're not talking about wine today but we were talking earlier how I'm a bit of a wine novice, I don't know too much about wine, so somewhere like here is perfect for me. Yeah. When I think, I think I like a fruity Sauvignon, but I'm not quite sure if I do, so I think it's amazing that we can just pop in here, yeah. try a few, and just really get to know with what we're buying and what we're tasting Definitely. when we go out. Definitely. Um, so we're here to talk about champagne, yep, obviously. Shay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Friday, so we hope if you are watching, you can grab yourself a glass of champagne. If you don't have champagne, grab yourself a glass of wine. So let's talk about champagne. Yeah. And something which you mentioned to me is that you're a champagne alumni. Now, talk to me about that. What is that all about? Because it is really, really interesting. Yeah, no, that's mega exciting. And actually it was, um, I went on something called the Champagne Academy, mm -hmm. where you get select 16 uh, people in the industry, you get selected to go to champagne. And um, in theory, sort of become ambassadors for, mm -hmm. for champagne and, um, and the Grand Marks, so, but it was just amazing. Um, but it is a course, so you kind of go through, you get tested at the end, um, and actually all the way through. So you kind of make sure that you're learning, yeah. um, and then at the end you are certificated. So yeah, I, yeah so it's really exciting. Yeah, nice one. So I'm, I probably stereotype. I'm being a bit, little bit stereotypical about champagne. I think the way I see champagne is that it's expensive and it's just for occasions. Am I wrong? or how would you kind of describe champagne and what it's used for? Well, I think it's interesting because yes, it is, because it'd be really ridiculous to say, oh, do you know what, champagne is, you could drink it every day because it's quite expensive. So yeah. it, without putting that into the equation, mm -hmm. that would be pretty rude of me to say, oh, you know what, like a bit blase, <laughs> well, I'm a champagne <laughs> lumo, I drink it all the time, I don't. But 
I think what's interesting about champagne is we see it separate to wine. Mm -hmm. That we see the champagne, it's like a separate kind of category. Whereas actually champagne, once you get to know your styles, which is where these courses are going to be really exciting, is that once you know your style, you can actually use it like wine a bit more. So yeah. appropriate champagne with food, you know, enjoy it with different things rather than seeing it on its own and then you sometimes have it with an occasion yeah. and, it's, and it's like a luxury thing. Because the other thing about champagne is it's really hard to know what kind of style you like. Exactly. So you know you're saying about wine. Yeah. Imagine then putting that into champagne mm -hmm. where every time you buy it it's it's at a premium price. Yeah. You can't taste all of them together ever to kind of to, to kind of understand what your style is. So mm. okay, so what kind of without going too much into detail because we will cover these kind of things on the potential courses yeah. I think we're looking at an introduction to champagne a champagne for professionals so if you are interested please let us know and we will add you to the waiting list but in terms of champagne and the different styles there are what kind of styles are there to champagne is it similar to wine is it different to wine yeah I mean I think it's like um, sometimes with loose we talk about wine in terms of music mm -hmm. um, and some like reds you know you would think that actually it's like got real bassy tones they're really yeah. deep champagne does sing a bit higher like it's like you don't always have that kind of real deepness with champagne yeah but you do have complexity so there is other elements to champagne where you can kind of, uh, where you can use it against them. But to say like a beef stroganoff, well, a beef bourguignon more, is going to go with champagne. You have to be quite particular about that kind of style of champagne that you're going for. Yeah. And that comes from knowledge. It's not something you go, okay. oh, do you know what? I think it's that one there. Um, they're the things where, you know, hopefully these courses will be able to put those into, into kind of perspective. And, and you'd Perfect. learn a little bit about that. Yeah. Do brands matter when it comes to champagne? Yes, yes and no. I think one of the things and why we, we speak about brands and champagne is that it's probably, it's a bit like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Because it's such an expensive, it's like, if you were like being open-minded completely mm -hmm. about champagne and you yeah. try every one and then you would really kind of go, oh, do you know what, I really like this. But as actually, lots of people taste one, go, I think I, I think I like that one. And so that will be the one they go for. And because the branding is so strong and so obvious, yeah. it's really easy for people to kind of get into a little bit of like mm -hmm. a rut with it. Um, whereas actually, if you know you say, for example, you like Laurent Perrier, there's actually a few champagnes which sit in the same category. Okay. If you like Bollinger, there's actually quite a few champagnes which sit in that category. So actually, by kind of expanding that, you kind of know, again, what your language for wine and indeed champagne yeah. would be. Yeah. So what champagnes do you have on offer here? Is it something where you can come here and have some tasting of champagnes? Yeah, we're definitely, well, uh, uh, alongside the course. Mm -hmm. um, and we're developing lots of kind of like tastings and stuff like that. So obviously yeah. with the kind of uh, like being so fresh and they're just coming in, we haven't got them lined up yet, but we'll definitely do be doing like a bubble tasting. We did yeah, one nice. at the four at 15 and it was mega good. So yeah. we'll probably do something like that. Um, and again, with the professional thing, we'll be tasting lots of champagne. So, when you go to the professional course, we'll be tasting stuff, so you actually will have a really great range of champagne, so that you can kind of see what's the best fit for you. And like differentiate, yeah, definitely. definitely. Because the bubble one is tasting things like Prosecco against Champagne, and kind of finding your, like those kind of things, whereas actually the, um, yeah, the professional one will be just about champagne and that in that regard. Perfect. So what have we got here? Can we do like a little tasting of it and yeah. we'll talk about the tasting of it? Because as I said before, I don't know too much about champagne. So it would be good for you just to kind of break down what we've got. Yeah, so this is actually not one of the Grand Marks. This is a um, Gonet. Mm -hmm. uh, we were laughing because it's like going, going, Gonet because we'd already <laughs> met a glass. It but, is um, nice, to be fair. <laughs> it's really it's good. Really good. Yeah. Um, and actually this, so yeah, so not a Grand Mark, but actually it's quite nice to sometimes show stuff which is also outside of that category. And yes. also sometimes you do get um, there's also value to be had there. So this is really, uh, it's Pinot Noir heavy, mm -hmm. so champagne's often made with three different grape varieties. This is about 60% uh, Pinot Noir, which normally adds like loads of fruit to the wine. Yeah. Um, but it's really kind of delicate, the bubbles are really kind of, um, although large, they it's quite, it dissipates really quickly in your mouth, so it feels very elegant. That's so yeah, what really I've lovely. noticed, it's not that bubbly, it's almost yeah. on the verge of like, tasting like wine, yeah, yeah. which is what I really like about it. Yeah, but when you smell it, you still get lots of the kind of like leasy, so it's quite bready and brioche mm. and stuff on the nose. So what kind of thing, what kind of food would this go really well with? Well, I think you would probably, with something like this, you could probably still go into kind of like chicken dishes. Okay. 
So you probably, this would be really lovely with something like kind of creamy chicken, because actually that acidity and the fact that it's got those kind of lots of sort of yeasty, leasy notes to it. In I terms of trends with champagne, mm -hmm. what kind of trends have you seen? Is there anything that you think might be up and coming? Do the trends change with champagne or does it usually just kind of stay uh, the same there offering? Is, yeah, not really. The, the trend, and when I talk trends, it's, it, it's a bit weird down here because we don't really, but like if it was like talking like sommelier speak or talking mm -hmm. about trends really, then it is probably um, like Brut Nature, okay. which is where they don't add dosage, but I'm not particularly a fan of that. I okay. actually like um, champagnes to have a, a good dose of dosage because I think it makes it feel generous. For me with champagne, the reason why I think sometimes it can be quite challenging when you first start tasting it is that although we think we're meant to like it, yeah. you take a sip and you're like, oh, bloody hell, it's like, you know, really like, <laughs> yeah. it feels a bit like striking and yeah. often that's because it's out of context. Um, but actually, I think that having those uh, brut natures are sometimes do it a little bit of disservice. But it's rare, they can be very good, again, if they're in situ. So they can okay. be very good with things like sushi and shellfish. Nice. Um, but for me, they're just not generous enough. And actually, even if that was just my opinion, that's something. So you do see trends like that. Mm -hmm. And so you find that when you go to the champagne houses, they'll be, oh, yeah, well, we've only got this, like sort of downplaying it a little bit. And you can kind of feel those trends coming from what, what they're seeing the market kind of demands. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the kind of things we can touch on when we run these courses. Yeah. And then after that, I'm going to do a little quick fire 20 questions with you. Okay. I'm actually also new to these questions. Okay. Um, so I haven't properly looked at them, which I thought <laughs> might be quite fun. Okay. Um, okay. But we'll come to that in yeah. a minute. Prepare for it. Yeah. You might want a sip of champagne. Um, so what kind of thing, if we were running an introduction to champagne, maybe for businesses that were kind of starting to show um, a bit more of a wider offering, what kind of things would you cover in that course? So I guess the essential for us is to cover like how it's made yeah. and also the context of your price and also what those, um, what those champagne houses can offer you also in terms of your business. Mm. Um, because uh, slightly more unusual things can often add kind of a little bit of other dimension sometimes and stuff yeah. like that. So it'd be, but essentially that basic course is less about how it sells and more about how it's made and why it tastes the way that it does. So just so that, finding out the backgrounds to the champagne. Yeah, exactly. So that Got you it. would be able to look at a champagne and I, like now I can read the back of the label, I know yeah. what's in now, I know why those things are in there. And so that would be basically where that basic one would be. Okay, and in terms of the professional side of the champagne course, so maybe businesses that already have you know, a wide range of champagnes on offer, what would that course entail? So that would be like, right, we've got the essentials, we know mm. where our champagne's made, it would be much more about um, uh, broadening what you could offer. So taste it, obviously great, like taste lots of stuff, but style, like a, you don't always have great opportunities to taste champagne. In fact, mm. uh, one of my first things when I was at 15 was that I don't know what my style is. Yeah. And you often inherit lists, they have something there already, it might be your own preference, but do you actually know that champagne is good? Yeah. Do you know, um, so it, we could do some blind tasting and just kind of really kind of break down those barriers of it. So exploring what those champagnes taste like, whether stylistically it's something that you want. Nice. And also if that is that, why and what does that then mean for your business? As professionals, it's like it will be, you know, you, there's, a, there's a different, if you're just enjoying, so like a beginner course, it's like mm -hmm. just why, you know, what is champagne like that. But with professionals, there's lots of elements that we've got to think about. Yeah. Um, and as champagne, there's lots of things that, like I said, they can actually offer your business. So okay. those kind of things. And so yes, it will be like that, but it's me, so it, it's the same. Don't really matter. Don't matter yeah. what I'm saying. Whatever you face to face with me, it's going to be the same kind of context. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be. You know, it'll just be really fun, really laid back. Uh, but hopefully everyone will really kind of get something great out of it. We hope you enjoyed today's little live. We will be on next week as well, and we'll put all of the details up for that. Um, in terms of the courses, if you are interested in a champagne course, whether it's an introduction to champagne or professionals for businesses with Ellie, then please um, visit the link in our bio. We are going to put a little form there where you can just sign your name, um, tell us the kind of things that you want to know, and we will make sure to set that up in the new year. All of our courses are on a fully funded basis, so there is no cost to your business at all, um, but it will upskill you, especially with the times we're in at the moment. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much for joining oh, me. Guys. We will now enjoy our champagne um, and carry on discussing champagne because this is really, really nice. Yes, really I need lovely. to know more about it. Yeah. So thanks again for watching.